Hello, this is Jim Reese at TSI. Today I'm going to walk through the process of creating some spools. And I'm going to go ahead and use some Victaulic mechanical piping. Start off with some 8 inch here. And I'm just going to go ahead and rise up, come over to alignment with uh, maybe this chill right here. And as I'm going ahead and placing the fittings and pipe, you'll notice that as I'm placing the Victaulic, the couplings are being generated as a specific manufacturer's content. And what that does for us, it gives us exact cut lengths of piping. So if I come over here, and tie into here, you'll see the rise of that goes directly into the piping right here, and the couplings are being generated automatically. What that gives us the ability to do, for example, if I come into isometric view and want to add, for example, a valve, maybe here and here, you'll notice that it adds the couplings for us automatically, which is to give us the exact length of this piece of pipe right here. Okay, so if I go back to this view, and if you take a look at, for example, in here, you'll notice that the pipe is going into the couplink. And you can actually see a gap in that between the two, the pipe and the valve itself, which gives us that manufacturing cut length that we need to fabricate from. So from here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my uh, spool view and go ahead and spool off these into individual fabrication pieces. So I'm going to bring up the spool dialog box type in my prefix, increment to one, two, three, four, five for each spool. I've got a template that's going to populate my project data. I can set my view direction that I would like. All my spools will show up in the dialog box with all the parts and pieces. I've got my settings for uh, text and my view itself. So I'm going to hit go right here. And it's going to allow me to take off uh, these components right here. Select go again, and I'll grab these right here. Maybe grab uh, this stuff right here. And finally, I'll select this right here. Grab that cup link. So notice that the colors are created for each individual spool, which identifies what is in each spool. The components themselves are right here. If I wanted to add a component, I could do that by changing the spool, either adding or removing components, and of course, the highlighting of the spool. What I really want to do is I want to create all spools within the selection set that I've just created. So what's going to do, it's going to add a specific view, it's going to set the view for me, it's going to add the build materials and the tag numbers for each one of those individual fabrication pieces. So if I come down to here, open this dialog box and you'll see right here, these are standard Revit schedules. And you'll notice that oh, here's all the components right here. We've got bubbles for each one of these, and if I would like to annotate these, I can do that by making this view active. Going to annotate. It's the end of pipe to the center of that fitting, which we call our atom technology. And again, from the edge, end of pipe to the center of that fitting, which on the is right there. At this point, it's pretty much the aesthetics in terms of how you'd like to show this. Now you notice this is a 12 foot piece of pipe, or sorry, end of uh, pipe to center of fitting, which is 11 feet 4 and an eighth. So what that means is, if I go through and look at this particular piece of pipe right here, if I make a modification in one view over the next, it'll take place automatically in the spool. So if I come over here and watch this 12 feet as they come in the model and pull that back down to 9 feet, it automatically updates the dimension and it modifies the actual cut length of that component for fabrication. Thank you very much. Hope you enjoyed this short presentation on spooling. For more information, visit www.siskiyou.net. Thank you.